Good morning and happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's great for us to be able to spend some time with you this morning. Uh, we know that there are people who are tuning in and watching from a lot of different places, so let's see how many of those places we can uh, name this morning. So, happy Easter to those in Rhinelander. And Harsha. And happy Easter to those in McNaughton. And Gleason. How about Starks? There's got to be some folks in Lake Tomahawk. Yeah, or how about Tomahawk? Or Minocqua, maybe? Maybe, maybe, maybe Madison? Well, I know we have some people in Texas. And I'm quite confident we have a few watching from Arizona. And I'm sure there's at least two in Minnesota. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Yeah, so we're, we're so glad that uh, so many people can be joining us from different places. You know, once again, we're not all in the same physical location, but we are coming together as a community this morning, as we're doing every week online, and we're joined together by God's Spirit. So thank you for coming. We're glad that you can be with us. We also do want to extend, because it's Easter, and there might be some additional family or friends who are tuning in, maybe grandma and grandpa, or aunts and uncles, and so once again, we're really glad that you could join with us. It's really nice to not have zip code be a barrier to worshiping yeah. together. Yeah, that's so Great. cool. Yeah. And if you're new to Trinity Lutheran Church and you're tuning in for the first time, we're glad that you're with us as well, and uh, hope that you can just uh, get a lot out of this special Easter Sunday celebration. And if you're working this morning because you're an essential employee, but you're able to tune in to worship in between customers or patients, we're glad that you're able to celebrate Easter with us. Yeah. Uh, we do want to stay connected with you, and there are a number of ways which we're doing that in addition to our weekly online service. And so maybe, Pastor Curry, you could talk just a little bit about what you're doing with the online gatherings. Well, we're having a great time on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, always at noon. So Tuesday and Thursday, we have devotions. Uh, Faith Bards help, helps lead music. Uh, I share scripture and a reflection on that scripture. And then we lift up prayers from those who are there, um, and we pray together. So that's over Zoom on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. Then Wednesday at noon, also over Zoom, we have like a coffee time. So that's more like Brady Bunch chit-chat with the little Zoom boxes. And we, um, we get to share highs and lows and kind of check in. My experience with most people is one day goes really great, or one hour goes really great, and the next hour feels kind of crummy or isolating. And it varies from day to day. So I've really enjoyed having the little check-in points during the week. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So that's our online option. Uh, we also have a few members of the congregation who are making some phone calls to different people. They're uh, reaching out, checking in. Uh, they're, they're looking for um, prayer requests or just to see how people are doing. So a big thank you to those members who are helping out with this phone ministry. It's, it's great to be able to extend ourselves that way. I also want to encourage you to use our prayer request portal on our website. It looks like not too many of you have been taking advantage of that yet, but if you go to our website, it's www.cometotrinity.com, you will see either uh, under the prayer request tab or a button there, you click on that, it will take you to a place where you can create a prayer request. Fill out that short form, submit it, Pastor Kari and I take a look at that, then we um, turn that link on, and anyone who goes to our website can see those prayer requests. I put a prayer request up, and then I got emails letting me know, I think three or four people prayed for my prayer request. It didn't tell me who, but it was very comforting and reassuring to know that there were people out there who were lifting up my prayers. So I would love to do that for you as well. Yeah. Uh, so others, even if you're not making a, a prayer request yourself, you can go there and you can see what other people are asking for uh, to be prayed for and you can uh, join in on that. And if you don't want it to be public, you can mark it private and then only Pastor Tim and I will see it. So yeah. that's an option. So there are a lot of options there with that. Uh, we want to just once again this week say a big thank you to everybody who's sending us texts and emails and written notes and phone calls. 
It's just so wonderful to be cared for, uh, supported, and encouraged. And so thank you to everybody who's doing that. Uh, we appreciate it, and we just encourage you to do that for one another, maybe your neighbors, maybe a family member you haven't uh, been talking to very regularly, that this is a good time to be uh, reaching out and uh, sharing those messages of encouragement and support. And thank you to everybody who's made an extra effort to be sending in your offerings at this time. Um, it's, it's just amazing how many times those envelopes are coming in through the mail here to the church. So thank you for the extra effort. Thank you to those who are enrolled in our Simply Giving and continuing to maintain that. Simply Giving has been something we've been developing the last several years, and it's uh, more important now than it has been. Uh, there are even some people who are enrolling in Simply Giving. I think there were five new um, enrollments the past couple weeks, so thanks for doing that. And then also uh, through our giving uh, option on our website, once again, the online giving option. Thank you so much. Your, your support and offerings are much needed, and they help keep our, our ministry vibrant and uh, able to keep going uh, during this time, so thank you. We also want to give a shout out to Faith Bartelt. We got messages after last week's worship service. Who is that musician? Yeah. So Faith uh, has been helping lead worship. She was helping us on Wednesdays and Christmas Eve, probably for the last like six or eight yeah. years. And she's now a junior at Viterbo in La Crosse. And so since she's home for the stay at home yeah. orders, uh, we've been taking advantage of her um, musical abilities. And so she's been recording herself and texting those recordings to us so that we can upload them into the worship service. It's been a huge help because uh, figuring all of the pieces out can be a challenge. So we really appreciate yeah. Faith helping us out with our worship service. Yeah, thank you so much, Faith. Okay, we're going to begin our worship time now. And like we have been doing the last several weeks, we're going to light a candle. So if you have your candle in your home, you can get it out and get ready. That we light that candle that reminds us of the light of Jesus Christ. We reminds us of the hope and promise of his presence to be with us. And so let's light our candles as we begin worship today. As we begin, we're going to do a litany. So I'm going to start, and then you can follow um, what Pastor Kari says. It's going to be selected verses from Psalm 118. Let us join together in worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. I give thanks to you. For you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the, the Lord, Lord has made. made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. it. We're going to join together now in singing our opening song. Good morning, church. To start our morning, um, we're going to sing an Easter hymn, a uh, classic, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. So uh, feel free to stand and sing along if you want, or follow, or do whatever you need to do in your home this morning. Um, but let's start uh, with a little praise this morning.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So for the sermon time today, we're going to try something that Pastor Carr and I have talked about for a long time. We just have never had the chance to really uh, give it a whirl. But so we thought, let's experiment on the biggest festival day of the church year. Let's experiment with something new on Easter. So, so here we go. So here's what we're going to do. Both of us are going to share in the message time today and we're looking forward to it but it's a kind of a new experience for us and so uh, we look forward to doing that today as we share the Word of God with you. About 18 years ago Pastor Kari and I moved to the Midwest. We went to seminary out in Berkeley, California and that's actually around the area where uh, Pastor Kari grew up. And when we moved back here um, during the summertime, a tornado watch or warning would come up on the TV, and Pastor Kari would just kind of go into this bit of a frenzy, and she said, well, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? I still think it's weird that it rains in the summer. It's <laughs> weird. And so this would come up, and I'd be, oh, yeah, like, there's, don't worry, there's nothing. And then, you know, maybe it'd be a thunderstorm warning. Oh, what, 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 are we, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what to do. And then um, when wintertime came and it would be driving out in the snow, she, you know, is there something I'm supposed to know? Is there a trick? Is there, are there things that I'm not doing that I'm supposed to be doing? She told me that um, she would come back for maybe a week in the summertime to visit her parents in northern Minnesota, but she only had the chance to come back once in the wintertime. And so... All of this was really new to her, and she uh, has told me that she always feels, even to this day, like she's not doing something she's supposed to do. Like everyone knows something but me. <laughs> so, uh, that's kind of been going on for a lot of years, and one of the things that I realize is that there is something that I don't know much about, and I don't know what to do, and that's what, what you do in an earthquake. Now, Pastor Kari grew up in a part of the country where earthquakes are pretty regular, and so we're going to look to you today to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I grew up, you know, in school we had earthquake drills, so it was duck and cover. So we'd go under the desk, we put our hands behind our neck, and we'd tuck our heads and sort of wait for the fake earthquake to pass. I only remember once actually having an earthquake during school, and it was so small and so short that none of us had time to react by the time it was over. And then we're looking around we're like, oh, an earthquake. And then it's, you know, kind of silly, awkward, funny. When Pastor Tim and I were living out in Berkeley for seminary, we heard this noise and then there was a little shake. And he said to me, he goes, did you feel that truck just bump into the apartment building? And I said, no, that wasn't a truck. That was an earthquake. He goes, no. And he did not believe me. But then on the news, we heard that there it was like measured like a four. There was like a little earthquake that day. So then, you know, I got to be right about that. When I grew up, you know, the little ones, you kind of get used to them. You sort of grow to enjoy them. But in 1989, I was in ninth grade, and I was at soccer practice on the field down the street from my house. Maybe you were watching the World Series, and I heard this loud rumbling, and I could see the windows in the houses nearby kind of bending and making a warbly sound. I saw the ground shake, and I heard the middle school gym, it was like aluminum walls, they weren't, they were just barn walls kind of, they were really loud and really shaking. 
everything was so loud. And then I heard one of the boys on my team, I was one of two girls on a boys team, one of the boys, he started shouting out, it's an earthquake, it's an earthquake. And then the other girl started telling everyone to sit down. I think she thought she was a duck in a duck and cover situation. But we were out on the field. We were in the best place possible. It only lasted about 15 seconds, but it felt to me like 10 minutes. People came out of the gym. There had been a basketball game going on. They came out, and I couldn't hear what they were saying, but there was sort of panic in their voices. I knew that this had been a big one. It ended up being measuring 6.9, which is big. I walked the two blocks home. Uh, the water heater in our garage had tipped over, and everything in our garage was wet. The TV had fallen face down. It was, that was back when TVs were big and boxy, but it had fallen face down. My dad's special clock had clunked. Books had fallen off the shelf. It just kind of looked like we got robbed or something. Things were just in disarray. The power was out. But the worst part is the earth kept shaking. There were regular aftershocks. So the neighbors came out of their house, because it's safer to be outside than inside, just in case there was another big one that was coming. Nobody was home at my house except my brother, and we didn't know where our parents were. Um, the neighbor played on the radio. She had the news going, and there was someone who said that Highway 17 was closed due to mudslides. Both of our parents drove Highway 17 every day for a 45-minute commute. We started to wonder where they were and if they would get back. Uh, my mom, she was home maybe two hours after my brother and I got home, but my dad, we didn't know where he was. And honestly, we didn't know what he was doing that day. He had some meetings and he was traveling. So then we heard about the Bay Bridge, which is a double-decker bridge connecting San Francisco to Oakland, and part of it had collapsed. The top had fallen on the bottom, and we knew that people had been hurt or killed in, in that collapse. And so then it, I started to worry that maybe his meeting was in San Francisco or maybe it, it would have been weird for him to ever have been on the Bay Bridge. But in that time, it's like, what if this was the one day when that was his route? My dad didn't get home until about 9.30. It was pretty scary. Um, and the earthquakes didn't stop. We did go inside and go to bed. My parents tried to be very reassuring that we were going to be okay. We, uh, we went to bed in our house, but I remember waking up all night. Like every little aftershock caused great alarm. It wasn't the aftershock. It was the fear that there would be an even bigger one next. Earthquakes are powerful. And if they're big enough, you can really see the impact. I want to invite you to take out your Bible at this time. We are going to look at um, the Easter story from Matthew's Gospel. So that is Matthew 28 verses 1 through 10. I'm going to give you a minute to find it. But Matthew tells how the events that morning really shook the world up. So let's hear that. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from the heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. 
And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. The news of Jesus' resurrection shakes things up. And we see in this Easter uh, Gospel reading today, the two Marys go to the tomb, and suddenly a great earthquake hits. Um, it was probably at least a 6.9, like the one that Pastor Kari described, maybe even a little bit more powerful in magnitude. But this detail isn't put in there just for our interest. It's not just kind of a, a side note. But it's an important detail about the earth-shattering event. It's signaling to us the action of God at work in the resurrection of Jesus. Through Jesus dying on the cross and his rising from the grave, God is creating something new for humanity. So Jesus' resurrection ushers in a new beginning. One of the things that we really need to see is that Jesus' resurrection is a starting point. That sign in the earth beneath is now matched by the signs of the heaven at Jesus' birth. The earthquake, of course, is not a description of the resurrection itself. There is no, no description of that exists because Jesus came out of the tomb without witnesses. But he came out of the tomb without witnesses so that the empty tomb would proclaim that he is risen. That big stone that would have been covering the entrance to the tomb, and if you go over there even today, you can see uh, evidence of these big stones that they would roll in front of the entrance to the tomb. That stone that was covering the entrance of the tomb wasn't rolled away so that Jesus could get out, but rather that stone was rolled away to let the women in. Philip Yancey, uh, in his book, The Jesus I Never Knew, on the chapter about resurrection, he says, the resurrection is the epicenter of belief. I like how he says that. Resurrection is the epicenter of belief. So the church is the new human community that then is going to embody the life of the risen Christ. The resurrection of Jesus is a starting point, and it forms this new human community around him, and then we embody that and go out into the world. That risen life of Christ then extends to us. I came across a story about a man named Kenny Bellow, who lived through the who lived through Hurricane Katrina back in August of 2005. He's just a guy with a boat, but he used what he had to help others. So we want to share a video clip with you at this time. Millions of tourists have seen the boat on display at the front of the Presbyterian Jackson Square, and they can learn it was used to rescue trapped victims from their flooded homes after Hurricane Katrina. But Kenny Bello drove the boat, and a decade later, the memories still haunt him. Really getting up close and personal with the boat again sometimes, it's, 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 it's hard. You know, there were some real heartbreaking moments that happened on this boat. For two weeks after Katrina, Bello carefully drove the 24-foot boat through the flooded streets of Uptown, Central City, Broadmoor, Hollygrove, and Girttown. Everybody knows the Katrina smell, and it's awful. You know, it just smells like a, like a burnt refrigerator. Um, but uh, the sounds of Katrina, during Katrina, it was deadly silent. He could hear people calling for help and pets barking inside homes. Over two weeks, Bello rescued over 400 people and many pets from flooded houses. Our mantra on the boat was every living thing. We're going to bring every living thing with us. But the flooded streets were filled with horrors. One day alone, Bello counted 21 bodies. It made him more determined, but sometimes those trapped in homes didn't want to leave. Taking a ride in that boat with me uh, was a ride to unsurety. You know, I, I didn't know where I was bringing them. 
Um, I brought them to a truck where I offloaded them. I don't know where they went from there. Um, I was often asked, what happens to me now? I didn't have an answer. Some of them were really afraid. It wasn't just a negotiation, it was an argument. And for me, I was arguing for their life. I, um, I had seen people not make it because of the heat, because of the, the dehydration, the, 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 the disease. As the days passed, the rescues became more urgent. For the first couple of days in the boat, I was pulling them out a dozen at a time, 20 at a time. And then after a while, it was, uh, you know, it was just, just one elderly man that could never yell to me. People were in desperate need, and there were people. What struck me is when he said, every living thing. He was going to help to save every living thing. Easter is a starting point. And then God extends this resurrection life through us. This reality of resurrection is new. And then it makes all things new. Easter is a message about the new human community. Jesus' resurrection shakes things up, shakes everything up, including our relationships with others, or especially our relationships with others. Hurricane Katrina was 15 years ago. Here we are again in a time of great need. Every living being is affected. And we are called to be resurrection people. And so we're called to love our neighbor. One way that we love our neighbor is by staying home. I know it feels like we're not doing it. I'm not doing anything. I'm watching Netflix. I'm so grateful for Netflix. But staying home impacts your community. And so don't minimize the, the sacrifice that you're making by loving your neighbor enough to stay home. Uh, the Trinity, the leadership here at Trinity, we've been talking about, you know, how can we impact our community? And so I contacted the mayor and I contacted City Hall, um, and it's kind of like, yeah, they want to figure this out too and we can partner with them, but there's so much going on. I also talked to um, NAF about our homeless shelter, you know, are there things that they need right now? And of course there are always supplies that they need. <clears throat> Their bigger concern though is the long-term impact this is going to have because they sort of rely on gatherings where they can fundraise and give people an opportunity to support that really important ministry in our community. I also talked to the Rhinelander area food pantry and at first they're like, we're good, we're doing really well, our volunteers are awesome, we're just filling our boxes and putting them in. But then I got an email letting me know, uh, Trinity, we supply volunteers for two Mondays a month. And we were struggling to find volunteers to fill those two days a month because really uh, the volunteer workforce is our retired community. They are serving every day of the week, probably, in these different volunteer capacities, including the Rhinelander Area Food Pantry. Well, now we're in this situation where a lot of those volunteers are in the high-risk category, and they need to stay home. If they're going to be responsible and take care of themselves, they need to stay home. And so it makes sense that they're not able to volunteer at the food pantry like they want to. So then we, I called some... Uh, High school, high schooler, a couple college kids, they're out of school right now. Well, they're in school, but they're home from school because they need to be safe at home. And then some uh, younger adults who are laid off from work, and so they're available to serve in this capacity with less of a risk. They're still taking a risk of exposure, but there's less of a risk because they're not in that high-risk <clears throat> population. These are examples of what it looks like to be resurrection people. Essential employees and volunteers who take a risk of exposure and those who stay home and make that sacrifice. We are grateful for your love of your neighbor and your willingness to do this because we are resurrection people. May we love every living being. I think one of the things that is a bit different about us as Christians, as Christ followers, 
is that we are empowered to share, to spread the life of the risen Christ through our words and through our lives, so that people around us will say, you know, you remind me of Jesus, whom we thought was dead. May we all be empowered with the risen life of Christ, the hope that he gives to us, the promise that God is with us no matter what, and that ultimately we are part of God's redemption, salvation, and, and message of love to all creation. Amen. Hey church, for our uh, special music today we're going to be singing a song called Resurrecting. Um, we sang our Alleluia as Christ is risen indeed, and now we know that through his res resurrection we are resurrected. And so um, here is Resurrecting.
Thanks, Faith, for that wonderful special music again. It adds a lot to our service, and we really appreciate it. We're going to join together in affirming our faith, and we're going to use the words of the Nicene Creed. So I invite you to join with me today. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our separate homes, but gathered together in spirit, we are uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection. We join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you call us to be resurrection people. Strengthen our vigilance when it comes to loving our neighbor. That we would see how your resurrection shakes things up. Help us to have love for every living being. We pray for our distraught world facing the coronavirus. For countries hardest hit, especially China, Italy, Spain, and the United States. For those who are grieving and for those who are sick and their families, especially John, Lee, Carol, Judy, Danny, Michael, Janet, and Emily. For the millions of people unemployed, for children at home, for all parents learning new skills, for teachers educating via technology, Lift the ache of worry from teachers' hearts as they know some kids are not safe at home. For hospitals in their desperate need of supplies. For all doctors and nurses and sanitation workers, emergency responders, delivery drivers, grocery store workers. For all who continue to work in the midst of this pandemic. For all of us who are missing families, friends, church, work, ordinary life. For those with prior illnesses whose treatments are now postponed. For those who are homeless. Those who are lonely. For those whose needs we know. For those whose needs are hidden. Lord, we carry their burden and ask you to lift it. We pray for expectant parents during this stressful time, especially John and Jen Prod and Heidi and Douglas Jensen. God, we pray that you continue to be with us, to breathe into us a life full of hope, and continue to shape this new community into the shape of the risen Lord. This and all that you see that we need, we ask in the name of the risen Messiah. Amen. Amen. Pray with us the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Well, once again, Happy Easter, Christ is risen. We're going to go out now singing our sending song. We hope that you have a blessed week. Happy Easter. Jesus has risen, our sins are redeemed, and let's go out singing a little building block today. <laughs>